Breast cancer is the most popular type of cancer found in women, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. Every minute, someone is being diagnosed of breast cancer. Now, the question is, how much are we sensitizing ourselves about getting checked, doing the self-exam every, every month, and going to get checked if you notice a lump? Now, as we share the stories of breast cancer, of people who lost and people who survived, today we're bringing you the story of Eno Essien, the founder of Raytrack, she shared her story of surviving breast cancer from the moment she found the lump to the diagnosis and just really getting her life back. It is our hope that this story would inspire hope in the hearts of anyone who is currently facing the fight against breast cancer or any type of cancer or anyone who has a family member or a loved one that is currently fighting breast cancer. We hope that the story of Eno Essien will inspire you to know that she fought it and she won and you can too. Hi, my name is Enai Sien and I'm a breast cancer survivor. I just felt the lump, you know, my hand just went there. Okay, is it cancerous? And then they just nodded, you know. At that moment, I didn't know people survived it, so it made it worse. <sighs> Those were like very traumatic. Ago. it's been seven years and um, everything was everything was fine I turned 30 that year my um, business was five years that year we had an anniversary a cocktail party I got a license to run the business that year and um, we went to set up another branch I mean everything was taken that year I got recognized by the future so it was just a very perfect year and while I was in Port Harcourt to begin um, work to begin to set up the new office as I went to bed at night um, just as I lay in bed I just felt the lump you know my hand just went there by myself and I just felt the lump and I thought something was wrong so I checked the other side and I discovered that um, there was nothing on the other side you know so that got me worried so I got up to try to do the check you know the self check you know and then it was still there so I called my mom to say, my mom is a retired nurse, she's a retired hospital matron. So I called her to say, this is what I've discovered. And she's like, no, leave it. Come When you come back to Lagos, I'll look at it. I then went to a, um, a breast surgeon, did an ultrasound, and then they said I needed to do a further biopsy. At that point, my mom was like, don't do anything. Come back to Nigeria. Because we were, I mean, we never thought it was going to go that way, you know. So I came back and I lived for about seven months afterwards, and then, I got this prompting again to do something about it. So at that point, we spoke to a, um, a surgeon who then said, if there's a lump, why don't you come and take it out, you know? So I went, took it out, and thought that was it. I mean, the worst had happened, and I was living my life. And then I'm um, about two weeks after was when I got the results. Now, um, I remember that period, you know, some days before then, my mom used to hug me a lot. She would kiss me. She would tell me how much she loves me. I didn't, it didn't make any sense then until one Wednesday morning, precisely on the 20th of March, I was getting ready to set out for the day when she came to me to say the pastor was around. We have a family pastor, someone who she was close to, who we were all close to, you know. So she came to say he's around. You need to come and see him. And then she walked out of the room and I thought, what kind of early morning visit is this, you know? So I went out, saw him, went downstairs, saw him, we were talking, he was going over the whole Jesus talk, you know? And then in between, I just asked, is the result of the biopsy out? And then they were quiet and said yes. So I'm like, okay, is it cancerous? And then they just nodded, you know? So at that point, that's how I got the news basically. And at that point, I remember being I think I was quiet for a few minutes, you know, just trying to process everything. And then after a while, I broke down. So that was basically how I got the news. At that moment, I didn't know people survived it. 
so it made it worse. So I thought, oh, all this, um, I was having a beautiful life as a den, so all of this was just going to come to a halt. So I was numb. And then after a few minutes, I got up, packed my things, and I left the house. I went to church. Now, I used to attend um, Wednesday fellowship, so that was what I was getting ready to go to. You know, so I dressed up and I went there. And I got there, I sat down, I was just crying all through, you know. And um, there was a lady who sat next to me, I don't know who she is, but she just held my hand almost all through the service. She didn't say anything to me, she just held my hand. And then after maybe say an hour, I, I just said, I'm leaving. And then she hugs me and says, everything will be okay. And I left. I went to the hospital to see the doctor. And um, he was like a chicken. He couldn't even say anything to me. You know, he was just like, can you just give me time? I mean, everyone was confused. You don't, I never expected that kind of thing to happen to me or even anybody around me. So that was it. Then I think after a while was when we now talked about way forward. The, by the next day, the doctor said, if you want the best medical care, go to the US or the UK. And if you're looking at cost, go to India. At that point, my sister lives in the UK. She's a British citizen. So it was a good, it was the better option between the UK and the US. So um, within two weeks, we started to make arrangements to leave, to get a doctor and all of that. And within those two weeks, eh, those were like, those were like very traumatic, you know. I was still going to work, I was still trying to live. The times maybe I'll go into the bathroom and then while I'm washing my hand, I'll look at the mirror and be like, so yeah, dying. Like the thought, I didn't say it, but that's, that was like the thoughts in my head, like you're going, you know. So it was, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do anything. I lost weight, I was, I was like almost half my size. When people saw me then, they would say, ah, this is fit farm, you know? They all thought I was doing something intentional, but I mean, that news was enough to kill. You know the funny thing? I didn't tell anybody till after the treatment, till I came back to Nigeria, I didn't tell anybody. I did that because I didn't want any negative. You know, people, it's just normal. By the time you tell somebody, the next thing is, oh, do you remember that my, that auntie that died? She had cancer, you know, it's almost like a normal thing here. So I didn't need the negative news. I didn't need anybody telling me I was going to die. I didn't need any negative news. So I didn't tell anybody. The only people that knew, my parents and my siblings. Um, I got to the UK and at the scheduled appointment, we met with the doctor, his um, uh, breast surgeon, and he's Nigerian. And he was like, um, I mean, there were a few people who God brought our way. He was one of those people. So he explained the whole process. When I went to the UK, I went with the mind that I would hear the diagnosis was wrong. I didn't go, I didn't still want to believe that that was what was wrong with me. You know, so I got there and um, the first checks, he, he explained it, you know, he was very supportive. So he told us the whole process, the whole procedure, what the treatment was going to be like and then gave us hope by saying that people did survive it because as at then I didn't even know anybody survived it so the the first sad news he gave was he confirmed that it was cancer and that he was going I was going to have a surgery you know and surgery was then you're thinking I'm going to sleep and I'm not going to wake up so that really made us very worried so we came in for the scheduled surgery before the surgery they had given us a lineup of what the treatment was going to cost. That was also heartbreaking because I thought, okay, I would go to the UK, receive treatment, come back to Nigeria, pay my bills later. But it was an absolute shock at that because I was a private patient. So before everything I needed to pay and then they gave me the, the lineup of the payment. So at that point, eh, I don't know which was taking me faster, whether it was a sickness or the money, because it was a whole lot of money. Anyway, so I started, um, I had the surgery, and the surgery took a really long time. According to my family, you know, it took about um, four or five hours.
I don't know what happened during the surgery, but when I woke up, or I, I think when I woke up, I know I saw an old woman who said to me she was going to take, she, she said to me she was fine and she was going to take care of me, whoever that was. Maybe it was someone in the hospital, maybe it was my imagination. And then the surgery went well. They took out the lump. I did a lumpectomy. So they took out like um, the, the breast cells, the ones that were affected, took out my lymph nodes. I had like enlarged um, lymph nodes. And then on the other breast, there was a lump, but it was benign. He still took it out. I mean, he did a fantastic job, very good scars and all. And then the treatment, the healing process started. Um, during the healing, after the healing process, or during the process, you know, there was a, the Friday we went for like um, a follow-up test. It was also another bad news day, you know. He said, uh, the, um, the surgery is successful, we've taken out all the cancer cells and you're going to have chemotherapy and radiotherapy and we're like no way also misinformation i got was that chemotherapy kills which is what this which is why a lot of people run away from chemotherapy you know after the news that i needed to go through chemotherapy and radiotherapy we were sad we went home we drove home so gloomy you know we we already decided that we weren't going to do it I was going to heal and then come back to Nigeria. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.